A message to Ethan Klein from the H3 podcast. I'm not going to beat around the bush today at all. There's a serious anti-Semitism problem, both on the internet, but specifically on Twitch.com. For all the streamers who are watching this, for all the people inclined to watch streaming content, this video is for you. It's time that somebody like me, a brown Middle Eastern Jew, chimes into the conversation. After a year of tolerating an anti-Semitic freak on his show and being friends with an anti-Semite, an open anti-Semite, Ethan Klein finally decided to openly address Hassan Piker's anti-Semitism. Let's take a look. Anti-Semitic fucking... Bro, I can't believe this man went from dunking on Steven Crowder to saying Steven Crowder ass shit. He's anti-American, radical anti-American. Now, instead of actually addressing a single point, he stops it before he gets there. I, I'm, I'm confused about where Ethan stands with this. For anybody who doesn't know who Hassan Piker is, Hassan Piker is the Turkish nephew of Cenk Uygur, a known America hater, a known anti-Semite on the internet. Hassan Piker, who was literally part of the Young Turks for a very long time, has been an open anti-Semite. There's literally a website we're going to go through showing how many times he has denied the R-wording of people during October 7th and how much he's glorified the attacks of October 7th by extremist Palestinians towards Jewish people and Palestinians living in Israel. Ethan Klein just ignored this. He even apologized for it. I mean, I was shocked after October 7th happened, watching Ethan Klein coming onto his podcast and crying in apologetics for what the Israeli army was doing in response to the worst massacre on Jewish people. And mind you, other Palestinians who were involved in that massacre, who were massacred by Hamas, coming on and apologizing for it and crying for it so that Hassan Piker would feel better. He, he conjures the image of Steven Crowder, who's got nothing to do with this conversation. And he says, how did you go from dunking on Steven Crowder to being Steven Crowder? Because it doesn't matter, Steven Crowder or not, put Steven Crowder to the side, Ben Shapiro or not. You are still a Jew, Ethan, and your wife is still an Israeli. For those of you guys who don't know, Ethan Klein is married to Hila Klein, who is an Israeli born and raised. She served in the army. I, I think she did some sort of Jobnik position. I don't remember exactly what it is, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What don't you guys understand? You sitting in your beautiful house in Los Angeles with your kids and your fancy cars and your mansion and living your life does not negate the fact that you are a Jew. Every Jew has felt this since October 7th. Look at me. I'm a Mizrahi Jew. All four of my grandparents were ethnically cleansed from Muslim countries, including Hassan Piker's country, Turkey. I'm Iraqi, Kurdish, Turkish, and Azerbaijani. I was kicked out. My grandparents were kicked out of all four of those nations for being Jewish people. I never served in the army. I never served in the IDF. I've never killed anybody. I'm a journalist. I've been a YouTuber for 10 years creating content. I'm here in Israel documenting the war. Do I have any protections from these people? Do I get any protections from Hassan Piker? No, since October 7th, I've been called a genocider. I've been called a white colonizer. I started a whole series on my channel just addressing how many non-white people there are in this country, which make up a majority of the nation. You think it matters, Ethan, that you, that you talk shit about Steven Crowder or Ben Shapiro? You think it matters to these people? And we're going to get into exactly why it doesn't matter in a second here. I'm going to show you guys exactly why it doesn't matter, because their anti-Semitism was showing big time. Twitch.com has a massive problem. Hassan Piker is a massive part of that issue. Um, once again, this is a crazy amount of wealth poisoning, and it's so disingenuous, and it's so bad faith. I hope it's clear to everybody just how bad faith this is right now and how desperately he's trying not to respond to any of the actual criticism that I've made. I, I Also, I have a major issue. I wanted to leave a nice comment for both of the videos that Ethan has made on this topic. He's blocked the comments of this probably because he's not ready for the backlash that will come from it. I don't know. Maybe there's a another more nefarious reason is like, I, I just ask you, brother, are you shocked? Why are you surprised that it's coming in a bad faith argument? I don't understand. You, you think the person who denies the R-wording of innocent people, both Israeli and Palestinian, Arabs, Palestinians were murdered on October 7th alongside the evil Jews, the evil Yehudis. Do you think that Hassan Piker, the man who denies that, would make a good faith argument in support of Jewish people? 
You think these people have your best interests or don't even your best interests or the best interests of your family. Just the truth. You think these people have the best interests of truth? Let's get real. Criticizing Hassan does not make you... Basically scraped these fucking bottom of the barrel talking points from. I know. I hear it all the time from his pathetic fucking fans that come in here and hit me with it every single fucking day. This so is, this is in my opinion, you hear how Hassan is talking. Hassan has an inability to deal with any, any baseline criticism of his evil thoughts, which he has many. He cannot handle having a conversation, for example, with somebody like me. He wouldn't be able to handle a conversation with somebody like me because I negate all of his talking points. And I'll never have an opportunity to be face to face, face to face with him because maybe my audience isn't big enough. And honestly, it doesn't really matter. I could give less of a shit about having a conversation with this anti-Semite. I have plenty of conversations with my anti with anti-Semites all over the internet through all the content that I make, whether it's on Instagram or TikTok or YouTube or in my live streams on YouTube. It doesn't really matter to me. The the my main source of uh, annoyance here is Ethan Klein's surprise, like the audacity that Hassan Piker would lie. It's like, bro, what do you think? This guy openly denies rape. He he would. This guy openly denies our wording. He 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 was celebrating the para the paragliders who came in on October seventh into Israel. He was celebrating it. And from what I saw recently online, we're going to look into this. He was glorifying the Houthis alongside other proxies from the Iranian Islamic regime who are holding random Filipinos hostage on ships. This is nothing Americans should be glorifying. Holding random Southeast Asians uninvolved in the Middle Eastern conflict hostage because they happen to be on a cargo ship working. And you guys are advocating for this with your free Palestine. And Ethan even repeats the same talking points of there's a genocide happening in Gaza. This is a new video he, or a video he uploaded a little before the one he uploaded today where he was, again, shocked at uh, a Twitch-sponsored event sponsored by Chevron, Capcom, Samsung, uh, just to name a few, who made a tier list, like an online tier list with Arab being at the top, okay, and Love Sabra, basically meaning Zionist Jew at the bottom. Sabra is, I'm going to explain this, for, it's been explained a billion times already, Sabra is a brand of hummus in Israel uh, that has been a source of the uh, BDS boycotts. Um, honestly, it's shit hummus. Nobody in Israel even eats this shit anymore. I haven't even seen it. I don't know why people keep propagating the idea that people are eating it. It's it's terrible hummus. It's horrible hummus. We, nobody eats this shit. But whoever whoever does eat this shit, I don't know. I guess you deserve to have it boycott. What, whatever, regardless of the fact, you're boycotting hummus, where, by the way, Israelis and Palestinians work and are employed. So Arab Palestinians that you're supposedly trying to save are a part of, uh, of, of making money from there. Uh, and yeah, they they went through this tier list, and he Ethan again is shocked. See what exactly is Twitch endorsing here? Okay, it's the perfect transition to our first person, Hassan. A Turkish person. Yeah. yeah. Gee, I wonder where they're gonna put Hassan. Hmm. I'm gonna guess they're gonna put him in Arab. Hassan is Turkish, but he's a brother. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, I think he'd be on Arab coded. I, I mean, I would put him in Arab to be. Honest. I would, I would put him also in Arab. <laughs> so he gets A tier, Arab tier. Okay. Now let me explain to you something. As an Arab, right? Somebody who who is considered Arab by the Arab world, me. I, my grandparents come from Iraq. Everybody tells me go back to Iraq, where you guys came from. You guys are Arab Jews, right? Even though that term is a little crazy let me just uh let's 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 just break down real quick the the arab world here's a little quick here's a quick look at the arab world just a rough map right you can see all these countries stretching from morocco and you know you could even make a claim that iran and all these stuff have been arabized to certain extents right or if not just islamified okay how many of these countries are actually arab how many about three, maybe two. This is the Arabian Peninsula right here. The rest of this land is in no way, shape, or form Arab in the slightest. They have been Arabized through an Arab supremacist system that came in and destroyed the cultures, ruined the religions, took away the cuisine, took away the languages, took away the beliefs, and replaced them with an Arab 
Islamo fascist supremacist system. Yes, these may be hard truths for you to hear because you're hearing it probably for the first time. But people like me, whose genetics come from right around here in Iraq and Mesopotamia, we didn't get the option. We were there for 2,000 years before the Arabs came there. And what happened when the Arabs came? They kicked us out of our homes, 1941, before the creation of the state of Israel. They kicked my grandparents out of their homes when they were 15 with swords to their necks during the Iraqi Farhud, a pogrom event that was inspired by the Nazis where Arabs of Iraq, where Arab Muslims of Iraq decided that the Jews were no longer Iraqi and they must leave. They must be deported or killed. On my grandfather's Iraqi passport, which we still have, it says all over the passport, you are never welcome to Iraq again. You are banned from Iraq. So for all the people who say, go back to where you came from, for all the people who say Zionism is the apartheid racist system, there's a reason why there is a tier list with Arab at the top, and that is because this right here is exactly the Arab supremacist system that you find all over the Arab world. It is the exact reason why before 1948, 900,000 Mizrahi Jews who were all considered Arab Jews, right? You would consider them Arab Jews, the Jews of Morocco, Egypt, Tunisia, Libya, Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Jordan. You'd consider those Arab Jews. There's a reason why there are no Jews left in the Middle East. And the only place they live in freedom and security is in Israel. It's just because we lived under an apartheid Ethnic cleansing and supremacist system. And you see this. I know that this is a joke, right? It's a tier list. It's funny. It's a Twitch-sponsored tier list. There's a reason why Arab is at the top in green and why Jew Yehudi is in red at the bottom. And you're going to see who they put down at the Jewish I list. I put him also in Arab. <laughs> Which is great. So Hassan Piker, an open anti-Semite, gets put at the top. Arab. Arab, representative of the Arab world. Here's another person, a Lebanese person, gets put at the top. So who gets put at the bottom? Ethan Klein. Ethan Klein, a notorious Jew. <laughs> this is a good reaction. That was a good and look how everybody boos. The whole crowd boos. <laughs> Anti-Semitism is not a problem in the United States of America, by the way. No, no way, shape, or form. It's totally cool. We're all Gucci. That's, oh, that's right. Jewish. Dude, where's the, where's the, you guys are missing a category for Zionist. For Zionist. <laughs> that was a joke. You guys, are, you guys are missing a tear for Zionist. Wow. And so there you go. They put Ethan Klein at the bottom. In the same video, Ethan Klein addresses the fact that they've unbanned another popular Twitch streamer named known as Sneeko, who, from what I believe, is half Filipino, half black, but recently converted to Islam in the wave of Andrew Tate's Dan Blazarian Islam extremist Islamist apologizers. apologizers. I, I always make a distinction to say it's definitely not all Muslims. I have plenty of Muslim friends who I love and care for deeply. But you do have this wave now of like Islamic fanboys. It's like a weird kind of Islam too. It's like the Muhammad Hijab internet meme culture Islam that's all about like male dominance but also oppressing women and LGBTQ folk honestly. And then you have like white liberal Western people supporting it and like openly endorsing it it's very very weird as again as a mizrahi jew you look at this shit and you're like what the fuck is going on <laughs> what is this like i'm not safe from i'm not safe from extremist racist white people i'm not safe from extremist racist arabs i'm not safe from anybody i got i got i am not got no safety from anyone here so Ethan, again, in his shock and surprise of the shit that he's enabled you know this culture that he's enabled in his platform okay he goes to say this. But now, they've unbanned Sneeko. Down with the Yahood! Down with the Yahood! And they've... And you think that that's a joke, but it's not. I know many a Palestinian that follow me who are now repeating the same talking points. I'm not talking Palestinians in Palestine. It could make a point, a case in point. Like 80% of them support Hamas anyway, so that's not something that I would be surprised about. I'm talking about Palestinians in the West. Palestinians in America saying the words, not down with the Zionists, down with the Yehud. They say, Khaybar, Khaybar, Ya Yehud. Remember Khaybar, the massacre of Khaybar, where Muhammad, their Lord and Prophet, came in and massacred the entire Jewish community of Khaybar because of an alleged backstabbing that happened towards their Prophet. They, they murdered everybody, the entire thing. But Muslims go around and they protest at pro-Palestinian marches. They say, Khaybar, Khaybar, Ya Yehud. 
Okay, remember, I'm just going to open up the map here again. For anybody who's confused on the geography, because I'm sure there's many of you are. Palestine, okay, is here. This little gray area. That's supposedly the ancestral Palestine. Chaibad happened down, down over here somewhere. These were these are separated by thousands of kilometers. Unrelated geographic territories, different kingdoms, different religions, different ethnic groups completely. I know this may be crazy for you to imagine because you probably think the entire Middle East is one uh, cohesive region. But no, these are two distinctly different regions. Why, when protesting at pro-Palestine marches, do you need to repeat talking points like Chaybar Chaybar Ya Yehud, an event that happened down here in the Arabian Peninsula where Muhammad massacred a Jewish community? Why would you need to repeat that for a, a protest happening for the freedom of people in the Levant, a completely different people? Is it maybe because the movement is anti-Semitic at its core? I don't know. I can't believe that they would say something like that. Hassan Piker would be anti-Semitic? What? That's shocking. I want to give a shout out to uh, some ordinary gamers, an Indian dude who does streaming content as well. He repeated some atrocities thing happening towards Gaza bullshit that, you know, I mean, I, I, at this point, all these people on the internet are... They're just very stupid. <laughs> like, you, you, you want to make a claim that atrocities are happening in Gaza? Please, let me point you the finger to the 300,000 dead in Lebanon, 500,000 dead in Syria, 580,000 dead in Somalia, 50,000 dead in Sudan since the beginning of 2024, 300,000 dead in Yemen, which none of you guys have commented on, but somehow everything that's happening in Gaza is an atrocity while Gazans openly support Hamas. While recording this video in the same fucking clothes I'm wearing right now, I had to run from a rocket that was fired by Hezbollah in southern Lebanon, which None of you guys have called an atrocity the fact that 100,000 Israelis, including Arabs and those people, have been ethnically cleansed, have been pushed out as refugees in their own countries in Israel since the beginning of the October 7th war. And in this same shirt that I'm wearing right now, while recording this video, I have to run from rocket fire, which you can watch right here. I uploaded on my Instagram conveniently for you guys to see. This is what it's like to live in Israel. And you hear those people who said, come, come in, come in in Hebrew, come in. Who are those Arabs? Palestinians. Massive explosion. Terrorists from Lebanon fired rockets into an Arab city here in Israel where I live. Anyways, I'll save myself the trouble of saying it, but in an Arab city where I live here in Israel, I live in an old Ottoman building that's 400 years old from the Ottoman occupation amongst a bunch of Arabs. Who let me into that safe space? Arabs. Who had to run from the rocket fire? Arabs. Palestinians, the ones you claim to be saving. So all this uh, uh, horrible uh, atrocities are happening in Gaza. Get the fuck on. Get the fuck on. You're not talking about all the other Arabs and Palestinians that are affected by the bullshit that the Islamic Nazi propagandists and Islamic Nazi terrorists are firing and making us live under. I'm an Arab. Have some respect for me before you start calling what's happening in Gaza an atrocity. Look at what's happening in Lebanon. Look at what's happening in northern Israel. Look at what happened in southern Israel. Before you start throwing the word atrocity. Are you throwing the word atrocity in, in Somalia, Sudan, Lebanon, Syria, uh, Yemen? No, you're not because you don't care about these things. It's only relevant to you on the news now. And again, it's not to give this guy too much shit. He honestly did some fair coverage. He called out the anti-Semitism. It's just, I'm, I'm tired of this shit. I'm tired of these people in the West thinking they understand this region. Everybody is suffering under the rule of these people, including you, Ethan Klein. Because of what Hamas did on October 7th, you are now suffering under this bullshit. It's coming for all of us. Nobody is safe from this shit. So here's some... Other idiot streamer on Twitch, I forgot her name, it was like Froggy or something, who, an open anti-Semite, hijabi Muslim uh, woman, uh, and just, just so you can see a little bit of the rhetoric that she, uh, she was uh, repeating here on Twitch. I have no pity at all for any soldiers. This and she gets a gift. So I will never have any pity for any soldiers. U.S. military? Boo f***ing who? I hope you get PTSD. I, I do, the ones I do, I, the ones I'm like, whatever about the U.S. soldiers are the ones that like acknowledge that like what they did was wrong. They didn't know well back, they didn't know back then. Whatever. You're, you're a good person in my book. Oh my God, Tom, thank you so much for the 10 gifted. 
Isn't it amazing to see American Muslims sitting in the freedom of the United States of America, not having to deal with any of the bullshit of their failing societies in the Middle East and, and, and saying things like veterans deserve PTSD? Isn't that amazing that we live in this day and age where this is readily available? Even, isn't it even more amazing that Twitch openly condones this kind of behavior on their platform? So the the U.S. military that are like, yeah, like, you know, I did this back then, but now I know it's wrong. Like, I'm changed. Like, imperialism, this, you don't deserve the PTSD. I love, and this was the, the one point that I wanted to commentate on in this video. She said, fuck the imperialism, right? Okay, let's go by your logic of fuck the imperialism. She openly supports Hamas. I don't even need to check. She for sure 100% supports Hamas. She supports the resistance, the Arab Islamic resistance. Explain to me real quick, imperialism. Okay, you have one tiny nation here, the size of New Jersey, where it's ethnic people. Jews have been living there for 3,000 years. Yes, at some points there were minorities, at some points there were majorities. Okay, but Jews have been living there for 3,000 years. When you dig underground in this land, you do not find Arab artifacts. You don't. I've been to so many dig sites. You just don't find Arab artifacts. Why? Because Arabs are recent invaders to this land. Does it make that they're not willing? Does it make it not right for them to live here? Absolutely not. I want Arabs to live here. I love Arabs who live here. They are welcome to live here. We love our Arab uh, brothers and sisters who live here, whether they're from the Druze or the Bedouin or the Palestinian communities. It doesn't matter. They are a part, an integral part of our country. But real quick, let's talk about imperialism. Iran, this country right here and the IRGC that controls it, is controlling terror proxies here in Iraq, here in Syria, here in Lebanon, here in Jordan, here in Egypt, and in Palestine, in the Palestinian territories, in, in the West Bank and in Gaza. In Gaza. What is more imperialistic than that? Let's go a level further. The country of Saudi Arabia that originated the idea of Arabism slash Islamism has spread far and wide to all of these regions going west and east, creating the Middle East and North Africa region that has been Arabized, which none of these people sub 800 years ago were Arabs. What is more imperialistic? This tiny nation the size of New Jersey taking back their land, taking back their culture, their language, their religion, and making it the dominant in that specific tiny little region versus all of this green. I don't know. This seems pretty imperialistic to me. It seems pretty imperialistic to me that I can't travel to any one of these nations without the fear of saying that I'm Jewish because I'll be slaughtered for being Jewish or I'll be killed for being a Zionist. Because I believe that my grandma, who's 86 years old and a refugee to Israel who never served in the army, never killed anyone, an Arab Jew, deserves the right to live and to not be living under constant rocket fire. Thank you very much. Thank you so, so much for considering my life as valid. Appreciate that. But like any other motherfucker, you're joining them. You're like, oh my God, I want my Camaro, no student loans. Thank you. I hope you get PTSD. Beautiful. I hope you get no health insurance when you get back into in america absolutely beautiful oh, how out absolutely beautiful i'm so happy that we have people like that living in america he goes on to commentate but this is the cool dude by the way the indian guy i don't know his name some ordinary gamers i just found his channel today i think i've seen it before he then goes on to show how hassan piker was glorifying a houthi rebel on his stream the crews on these ships and they like like win them over with their charm and they make them hate america and the u.s government <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny about china. <laughs> does he know anything about china he's saying he hasn't spent much time with chinese people but one of the captains the captain was chinese and he uh he he did caught with them and he uh, uh danced some music with them and he was vibing so he 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 likes them yeah. mind you this is in the context of them taking ships hostage and or blowing them up and killing everybody on there now again the predominant crew that work on these cargo ships that the houthi rebels are attacking and targeting are Filipinos, are South Asians. There are Southeast Asians and South Asians from Bangladesh, Pakistan, India, who have no money, who work their asses off to get these sailing degrees to go out and risk their lives carrying the cargo for us. I know because I sailed on cargo ships. When I was doing my travel vlogging, that's one of the series that made me famous on YouTube, was my cargo ship series. I know this because of firsthand experience. And these pirates come on and destroy these people's lives, hold them hostage. Again, there are ships that are currently being held hostage in Yemen and in Iran that are unwilling to release these Filipinos and these Indians' uh, crews back to their countries. They're just holding them hostage. 
And they're laughing about it. And Hassan is cracking up about it while he's in his fucking millions of dollars apartment with his millions of dollars of, of game setup, which all this shit has arrived because of the hard work of these people who go, who go through the hard effort of shipping all this stuff around the world. And Hassan gets to laugh about it because <laughs> the Houthis are converting people to hate America while you're sitting in America. You fucking idiot. You are sitting in America. And you're and you're talking about terrorists. This, these people are are they not domestic terrorists? I'm sorry. Are these people not domestic terrorists? I'm patriotic. I love the United States of America. I was born and raised in America. I happen to live in Israel now, but I love America to my core. I would never, I would never in a million years align with somebody who is a terrorist, right? A terrorist or somebody who is uh, actively trying to produce hate or a negative rhetoric towards America. As American citizens, should we not be striving for the betterment of America? Why, why would, if you're going to platform a Houthi rebel, if you're going to platform a Houthi, why would you not take an opportunity to ask them about, I don't know, what is it like holding random Filipinos hostage? Why would you not release them home? Do you think that's the right thing to do? Why did you get involved in a war that's million or th hundreds of, Sorry, thousands of miles away from you. They're down here in Yemen. Why would you get involved in a war? They're down here in Yemen. Why would you get in a war that's thousands of kilometers away from you that you have nothing to do with in a country that you've never had a war with before? Where, by the way, you ethnically cleansed your entire Jewish Yemeni population too, and all of them live here now. And now you're going to kill them with drones and missiles randomly fired at them. I've had to run from the odd Houthi missile since I got here in Israel about a year ago. It's not cool. There's nothing. There's nothing funny about it. <laughs> so what, I mean, what? It, <laughs> that's so crazy. So they're just fucking chilling with the captains. Like I don't understand. Yeah, I just. Want they're just fucking chilling with the captains. It's so cool to just chill with terrorists. Wow, man, that's so awesome. That's so awesome. A friend sent me this site. Uh, Dan Clancy is a, apparently the founder of Twitch, or at least the scientist behind it, C CEO of Twitch. He looks kind of like a creep, not to commentate too much on his uh, looks, but he does look a bit like a creep. Uh, and he sent me this website called DanClancySucks.com, where basically they're aggregating all the anti-Semitic bullshit and garbage that's been on the website. Here's uh, Hassan, this, this awesome guy, Hassan, uh, repeating another anti-semitic talking point i mean he is an anti-semite right we can all openly say that but here's the um the, the so he repeats in gaza this a palestinian to be fucking executed ruthlessly in the streets so that you can build another fucking theme park in gaza this guy only said three things none of which implied that you fucking baying pig you fucking bloodthirsty violent pig dog so pig dog, I didn't even know this till today in the morning, is apparently an anti-Semitic insult. It means schwein, Schweinhund in German. Pig dog bastard. It's an anti-Semitic insult from the Holocaust. Are we surprised that Hassan Piker is an open anti-Semite? Hassan Piker physically recalls that the ideas of, uh, of October 7th are words being real. Hassan says it's okay to R word rich women. Uh, Hassan calling for violence. Uh, Dan wishing Hassan, Dan, the CEO of Twitch, wishing Hassan a happy birthday. So Ethan Klein probably didn't watch this video. I hope that his followers can send this video to him. You seem to be shocked and surprised by what you've enabled here. You've enabled this kind of behavior. You've enabled this rhetoric. You've enabled this on your platform. And I honestly, I have, I have a message in Hebrew for his wife, Hila. Um, and I have to say, אני צופה בכם מעל עשר שנים כבר, ולראות איך שאתם הכחשתם את כל ה-violations against human rights האלה מתחילת המלחמה נגד ישראלים, נגד יהודים ונגד ערבים ישראלים שעומדים פה במדינה ומשרתים בצבא להגנתכם, לא רק בישראל אבל בכל העולם, ערבים ישראלים מוסלמים פלסטינים ש... ש, ש שמקריבים את חייהם כל יום בשבילכם בעולם המערבי, בלוס אנג'לס, שתיהנו מחופשיות. ולראות איך שאתם פשוט הכחשתם את כל זה, ונתתם ל, ל, לשנאה הזאת לבעבע בפלטפורמות שלכם, זה פשוט... זה, אני מתבייש. אני באמת מתבייש. It's shameful. את ישראלית, הילה. והוא יהודי. איתן ישראל, יהודי, שגר בישראל. אתם לא יכולים לשנות את זה. 
אני לא אומר עכשיו שאתם צריכים לשבת ולהיות הציונים הכי גיבורים והכי הכי פראוד שיש בעולם הזה, אני לא אומר את זה בכלל. אבל המינימום, מה אתם רצים לצד הפרו-פלסטיני? מה אתם, מה אתם repeating the talking points of genocide? אתם יודעים what actual genocide looks like. I don't remember which uh, Arab countries הילה מגיעה מהם, אבל let's be real, you're a Mizrahi Jew and I'm a Mizrahi Jew. We know what actual genocide looks like. We know what actual apartheid looks like. Our family members went through it. If 700,000 Palestinians at the highest estimates were ethnically cleansed during the Nakba of 1948, and there are 6 million living between Gaza, Israel, and the West Bank today, that is no genocide, that is no ethnic cleansing, and you fucking know it. Shavei lechem na'atchi la'avin mi ha'oivim ha'amitim shelechem. Shuv, ani lo omer shetem tzichim achshav lavo ve liyot po israelim na'atchi la'asot azbara. אבל תבינו שאנשים כמו הסאן פייקר וכל החבר'ה שמסביבם, when the day comes and you need help, הם לא יגנו עליכם. Other Jews will. Thanks for watching, folks. See you in the next one. I love you a long time. Goodbye. If you believe in my content and want to support me, just know your help is needed. There's a bunch of great ways to monetarily support the channel. Some of the best ways to support me happen to be PayPal, buy me a coffee, or joining our Patreon community. Links to them can be found in the pinned comments or the description of every one of my videos. Joining my Patreon community gives you access to exclusive content and the chance to talk to me on our Discord server. I also go live almost every day here on YouTube. And after my live streams, me and my patrons from Patreon head over to our Discord server to an exclusive after-party hangout. Your support is the only way that I can keep creating the content that you love watching for me. Thank you.